All right, in this video, we're going to go over the trigonometric functions, uh, which uh, we're going to use to find different uh, pieces of information about right triangles, mostly. Uh, we can involve the trig functions or trigonometric functions in other uh, types of problems involving triangles that aren't right triangles. But for our purposes for right now, we're going to be using uh, the three functions uh, that we'll see in right triangle applications. So uh, the first thing we need to be able to do is identify the three sides of a right triangle. And this sounds really simple, but it's actually really important uh, when it comes to trying to solve these problems. Uh, so the first thing is all of the sides of a triangle uh, are going to be in reference to a specific angle. So if, let's say, we were going to look at angle A to start with here, and we want to see three sides of this triangle. One is opposite, one is adjacent, and one is the hypotenuse of the triangle. The hypotenuse is always the easiest side because it's across from the right angle. So in this case, the hypotenuse here is side AB of this triangle because angle C here is the right angle. The side across from that is the hypotenuse, which in this case would be side AB. So the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle in the right triangle. All right, so the hypotenuse here in this case would be AB. And the other two sides are what, are, what we're gonna call opposite and adjacent. So if we look at angle A here, we have two sides left of this triangle, right? We said that side AB was the hypotenuse, we have two sides left. So one of those sides is opposite angle A and one of those is adjacent. So the word adjacent means next to. So if something is adjacent to something else, it means that it's next to it. So the side that's next to angle A or adjacent to angle A would be side AC. So this would be our adjacent side. And opposite, right, we could think of this as across from so in this case, the side that's opposite angle A is side BC. All right, so if we're looking at angle A, then the three sides of the triangle that we would identify here would be the hypotenuse, which again is always across from the 90 degree angle. So here that would be side AB for the hypotenuse. And then the opposite and adjacent. So opposite means across from. Adjacent means next to, and if we're looking at angle A, we have next the side next to it would be AC, the side across from it would be side BC. So we're going to flip this around and now look at angle B. So if we're looking at angle B and we want to identify these three sides of the triangle, first thing, the hypotenuse, again, is always across from the right angle. So the hypotenuse here is going to be side AB. The opposite now is going to switch because opposite angle B would be this side, AC. Because now that we've switched angles, the side that's opposite from angle B is gonna be different than what was opposite of angle A, right? If we look at it, angle A, we said across from angle A was this side BC over here. But across from angle B is side AC. So this is now going to be our opposite side. And what's adjacent to angle C, or angle B is what's left and adjacent to angle B would be side BC. All right, so the opposite and adjacent sides change depending on what angle you're referencing. So in this case, we were referencing angle A and we had the opposite over here and the adjacent over here, but now when we're referencing angle B, the opposite side comes over here and the adjacent side is over here. So opposite and adjacent it's really important to remember they're all in reference to a specific angle. All right, so opposite for angle B and so on. The one thing that doesn't change is the hypotenuse, right? The hypotenuse is always going to be across from the right angle. So that's easily the first thing that you can identify is find your right angle and the side across from that is going to be the hypotenuse. All right, so we can apply this with three trigonometric functions. The first one is called the sine function and it's abbreviated S-I-N. So sine of theta, and theta just is a variable that we use to represent an angle or an unknown angle. So just like the variable x is usually used to represent an unknown, the variable theta is used to represent an unknown, usually going to be an angle. 
So the sine ratio is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse side. So all these trigonometric functions are our ratios of sides. So we identified the sides before. Let's say we take the same triangle A, B, C that now has uh, three side lengths that have been given to us. And we're gonna, let's say, look at angle A first. If we wanted to find the sine of angle A, we would do the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So for angle A, the opposite side, if we go across there, is four. So sine of angle A would be four for the opposite, and then the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. So in this case, the hypotenuse would be five. So the sine of angle A would be four fifths. And we could use this sine ratio to solve for the degree measure or the radian measure of angle A. So this is what we use the sine function for is to find either the lengths of sides or the angle measures. And we'll get into some examples of that in the next video. But for now, what you wanna know is be able to identify each of the trigonometric functions. So sine is the first one, we're gonna look at a couple more and what they mean in terms of the sides of a triangle. So sine always means opposite over hypotenuse. So we did the opposite for angle A and the hypotenuse would be five. We could also find the sine ratio for angle B up here. And for angle B, the same thing. We have sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side from angle B would be three and the hypotenuse stays the same because it's always across from the right angle. So the sine ratio for angle B would be three over five because three was our opposite and five was our hypotenuse. All right, so the sine of A we said was four fifths, right? If we took angle A down here and the sine of angle B was three fifths. All right, so the sine ratio is gonna be different depending on which angle you're looking at, all right? So it's important to remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We're gonna look at another uh, trigonometric function called cosine. So the cosine function is abbreviated COS and the cosine ratio is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's very similar to sine. The only difference is we're taking the adjacent side in the numerator instead of the opposite side. So we could take, again, label this triangle ABC. And if we look at angle A first, if y'all maybe uh, try and pause the video if you think you're getting the hang of this and identify what the cosine of angle A would be, if we're doing the cosine ratio, this time we're looking at the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side for angle A would be three, because this is the side next to angle A, and the hypotenuse, again, always across from the right angle, would be five. So the cosine of angle A would be three for the adjacent side over five for the hypotenuse. All right, and again, we could use this uh, to solve for angle A. We'll, we'll get into the applications of these trig functions in the next video, but you should hopefully be able to identify by now what the cosine of an angle would be. So if you want to pause the video and try and find the cosine of the angle B here, that'd be great. Uh, so for angle B, the adjacent side is this four. So for cosine of B, we'd have adjacent, which in this case would be four, over hypotenuse, which again is gonna stay the same as five because that's across from the right angle. So cosine of A, cosine of B, two different numbers because we have two different angles here, angle A and angle B. All right, so the cosine ratio adjacent over hypotenuse. And the last trigonometric function that we're gonna look at right now is the tangent function. This is abbreviated TAN. So the tangent function is opposite over adjacent. So if we take the same triangle, ABC here, and we look at angle A, we wanna see what the opposite side and what the adjacent side is for angle A. So if you wanna maybe pause the video and try and find what you think the tangent of angle A would be, what ratio you would end up with. So angle A, if we look at the opposite side first, opposite from angle A would be four, and the adjacent side to angle A would be three. So the tangent ratio for angle A would be four thirds. 
what about the tangent of angle B? We'll put this in blue so we can keep them straight. So if we're looking at the tangent ratio of angle B, we'd again do the opposite side over the adjacent side. So opposite from angle B, we have three. And opposite from angle A, or sorry, adjacent to angle B, adjacent to angle B, we have the side four. So the tangent of angle B would be three-fourths, and the tangent of angle A would be four-thirds. So when we're doing these trig functions, all it really comes down to is identifying the proper sides when we're looking at these angles. So again, it's all in reference to what angle you're looking at. And again, opposite means across from, adjacent means next to, and then the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. All right, so this was uh, probably a lot of new information. Uh, so a helpful uh, mnemonic that we can use to remember the trig functions is SOKATOA. So SOKATOA stands for sine is opposite. Uh, I'm using the, <laughs> the top letters here. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tangent is opposite over adjacent. All right, so this can be a helpful uh, mnemonic if uh, you're solving, uh, when you're first getting used to using the trig functions, if you maybe write this out on, your, on the uh, top of your page or something like that, it can help you uh, remember, uh, when am I gonna use sine, when am I gonna use cosine? Uh, so yeah, uh, this is a good way to remember uh, the different trig functions. All right, so thanks for watching this video on trig functions. In the next one, we'll learn how to solve uh, actual triangles for lengths and angle measures using these three functions. Uh, so thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.